Hey guys, it's Belinda. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Revit Lookup Tool add-in. One of my resolutions this year is to learn Python. I know the basics of it. I know how to write a custom Dynamo script, but I wanted to know it really fluently. I don't want to have just a superficial knowledge of it. So as part of this learning process, I came across the Revit Lookup Tool add-in. It was created by Jeremy Tamik, who we all know as the building coder. It's available on his GitHub page, which I'll link below. Another guy, Harry Mattison, he created an executable file. So it's very easy for you to download that and just install it on your computer. This Revit lookup tool add-in allows you to access all the metadata of the elements in your Revit model. When uh, the Autodesk developers were coding the project, they didn't use the most intuitive names for these parameters. So this add-in is a great tool to access all that data so you can manipulate your elements in whatever way you want. I'm going to show you two ways of accessing the parameters and built-in data. Um, first through Dynamo and the second through your Revit lookup tool add-in. So I started up a simple Revit model and the first thing I'll do is create four walls in my project, each of them just 12 feet long. I'll change the color of one of these walls to black just to distinguish it from the others. I'm going to start a Dynamo script and I'll create a select model elements node. I'm going to bring in just that one black wall into Dynamo. The next thing I'm going to do is create an element parameters node to access all the parameters of this black wall. And I'll also create a watch node to see the final output. So when you run it, you can see that uh, Dynamo has extracted 31 parameters from this wall, which is not bad. I mean, that's a lot of data. But let's do the same thing with the Revit lookup tool add-in and see how much information we can extract from there. With the one wall selected, I'm going to go to add-ins, Revit lookup, click on uh, Snoop Current Selection. And here you can see all the information held in that one wall. The storage type, the ID, the width, height, the work sets, everything. If you click on any one of those parameters, it pulls up another dialog box with even more parameters. If you click on that built-in Enum Snoop button at the bottom, you're able to access all the built-in parameters in that family. And you can clearly see these names are not something you're just gonna know off the top of your head. They're not the most intuitive, like wall underscore height underscore type. You can get the offset, all this stuff. And it gives you that name. That's a key feature of this uh, add-in. You also get the data types of each one of those parameters and the value string, everything. So that's enough talking about the add-in. Let's go and actually use it. Uh, I'm going to select the three white walls in my project and change the top constraint from unconstrained to level two. I'll keep the top constraint of the black wall the same, but I'll change the work set to demo. I'm going to start a new Dynamo script. I'll first create a select model elements node, and then I'll create a Python script node. I'll name this Python script walls, just so we know what we're doing, and a watch node to see the output. I'll select these two walls in the right, one white and one black wall, and bring that data into Dynamo. Let's edit the Python script node now. So by default, Revit and Dynamo has the proto-geometry database added in. I'm also going to add in the Revit API database and the Revit services database. Using asterisk after your import sign just means that you're importing everything from that database into this Python script. This document manager line just lets me access the current document I'm working with. So in my Python script, I'm bringing in two walls. So I want to unwrap those two walls and put it into this elements list. I'll also define a new out list, which will be the final output. It's going to be empty right now. I'm going to start a for loop and loop through these two walls that I brought into uh, Dynamo. I'll define a third list and call it P. And I'm going to extract data from each of these walls. The first will be the ID the second, the name, and the third, the width of the wall. And 
Now this data, I'm going to append it to that empty P list that I defined in the beginning of that for loop. The ID, the name, and the width. All that information, I want to append it or add it to that out list that's gonna be our final list. Now the reason why I'm using P and out list, two different lists, is so that in my final um, watch node, I'm going to see them grouped as two separate sublists. If I append all the data to one single out list, it's just going to be listed one after the other. You're not going to know what data is for which wall. They're not going to be any separate sublists. So this just makes it clearer when you're looking at the watch node. A list was created as your output with two sublists, one for the first black wall and one for the second white wall. Now this list has the ID, the name, and the width of the wall. Now let's try to get the work set of both of these walls. So my Revit lookup add-in says that I'm gonna access it with the parameter work set ID. I'm gonna go back to Dynamo and my Python script, and I'll create another variable, call it work set, and I'm gonna extract the work set table and the e.workset ID, that work set ID of that particular element, into this um, new variable. I'll then append it to the P list, and which should automatically append it to the out list. And when you run it, you can see that that out list was updated to include the work sets of those two items. Let's try to extract three more parameters from these two walls. We'll extract the length, which is curve underscore element underscore length. We'll extract the top constraint, which is wall underscore height underscore type. And we'll extract the actual height of the wall, which is wall underscore user underscore height underscore param. That's a long name for a built-in parameter. Okay, we're gonna go back to our Python script and type all that in into three new variables. So the first will be length, and we're gonna get the parameter, the built-in parameter, curve element length as a string value. I'm just gonna copy that over for our top constraint, and I'm gonna change the built-in parameter name to wall underscore height underscore type. And finally, the to overall height of the wall, I'll change that built-in parameter name to wall underscore user underscore height underscore param. I'll append these three new variables to our P list. And when you run it, you can see the out list now has three new items for each wall. The first is the length of the wall, the second is the top constraint, and the third is the overall height of the wall. That's pretty cool. Okay, now we figured out how to use the Revit lookup tool add-in for walls. I'm now gonna show you how to extract data for doors and then for windows. Okay, so we'll create a door on one of the white walls and one of the black walls. I'm gonna change the dimensions of one of these doors just so that we can distinguish the two. Now, if you click on the edit type uh, in the properties panel, you can clearly see the width and the height of the doors over there. But if you go to the Revit lookup tool add-in, it tells you that the height, the door height and the door width are both zero. And you can even try other built-in parameters there I've tried generic height, I've tried the generic width. I'm not able to get the actual height and width of the doors through one of those built-in parameters. And I finally figured out the reason behind this. It's because these two doors are instances under a single family. So these built-in parameters are trying to extract data from the family, which doesn't have any data. The width and the doors are specific to those instances. So you have to manipulate your Python script just a little bit to get the width and the height of these doors from the instance level rather than from the family level. I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna duplicate this Python script and change it to doors. I'm 
Uh, I'm going to delete everything that we don't need from this Python script. And I'm going to bring in those two new doors under the select model elements node. So you can see that the IDs have changed and the two new doors have been brought into the Dynamo script. So if you try to run it now, we are going to get the ID, the name of the doors and the work set that they're in. So that works fine. So we need to extract the width and the height of these doors at the instance level, not the family level. So I'm going to create a new variable, call it new E. And from the original element E, I'll get the ID type that will allow me to extract data from the type rather than from that main family. I'm going to define a new variable, call it width, and I'll extract the door underscore width, which is a built in parameter and I'll get that value as a string. Let's copy that over for the height and just change the built-in parameter name to door underscore height. We're going to append these two values to our plist, run it and okay, I've got an error somewhere over here. Okay, my A was lowercase and not uppercase. Um, Python's case sensitive, so you have to be very careful when you're typing all this out. Okay, so we were able to extract the door width and the door height in our final out list. I'm going to show you what happens if you try to extract the width and the height at the family level rather than at the type level. I'll change new e to e dot get underscore parameter and I'll delete the new e variable. Uh, when you run it, you can see that the width and the height are zero. That's because it's trying to extract that data from the family level and it doesn't have anything, any value over there. Okay, now let's try to extract some data from Windows, which is very similar to the doors. I'll create two windows on this left wall, one much smaller than the other. I'm going to copy my Python script over and rename it from doors to windows. Using the select model elements node, again, I'll bring in those two windows into my Dynamo script. I'm going to open up the uh, Python script we wrote and change door underscore width to window underscore width and door underscore height to window underscore height. And you can see the three feet, four feet, one foot four and two feet. That's the correct values in your final out list. If you select one of those windows and you go to the Revit lookup add-in snoop current selection, uh, go to your built-in enum snoop again. And uh, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom and you click on windows width and window height, you can see the value is zero, which is the same issue that we had with doors. So that's why you have to extract data from the instance of your type rather than the family. I hope this video was useful. I plan on using this Revit lookup add in a lot to get all that built in parameter data and manipulate it. Um, I'm thinking of doing a video explaining that beginning part of the Python script where you bring in all your Revit services and your Revit API, just understanding what that is. Because most people, including myself, I just like copy and paste it from a notepad that I have. But I want to know exactly what each of those lines mean. Um, so I'll try to make a video on that soon. If you have any other suggestions, just let me know in the comments below. And I'm going to link the GitHub page in the comments as well. Um, so until next time, I'm Belinda. Thanks for watching.